This year, Crow and Mooring celebrates our 40th anniversary. It's an exciting time to reflect on power and soul that has made us who we are and propelled us to success representing world-class clients in their most complex legal matters. We launched in 1979 when 53 lawyers and a team of professional staff split off from one of the largest firms in the U.S. to create something new. It was a revolution led by formidable attorneys whose entrepreneurial spirit and tireless efforts over many years laid the foundation for the successful firm we have today. The team included esteemed lawyers like Stan Johnson, Brian Elmer, John McLeod, and many others. And of course, the leader of that revolution was the visionary Eldon Took Kroll. We've had many members of our community share their indelible memories of Took Kroll, who was as unique and unpredictable a character as you'll ever run into. The Took Kroll, being the powerhouse that he was, and easily the most successful lawyer in the Washington office, could have just gone off and formed his own law firm uh, with Stan and Roger and all the other government contracts lawyers. But uh, on the flip side of Took's attitude was, look, you know, I could go off by myself, but I want to build something with these folks. These people are my friends. I've worked together with them. They're supporting me. I'm going to support them. I went with Crow and Morin because of Took. He was just a dynamic person. It doesn't matter what your station in life was. He was always there for you, and he would always come back to say, how are you doing? What can I do to help make sure your day goes better? And that personal touch you know, allowed me to say, I want to be with Crow and Morin. I was lucky to arrive while Took was still very much a member of this community and a mischievous one who would, you know, sort of move from office to office, pulling pranks on people, introducing himself, forcing us to introduce ourselves, uh, making sure that he showed everybody from uh, the partnership to the staff um, to the clients how much they mean to this place. I was the 100th lawyer to join Kroll & Mooring which um, turned out to be a great honor. And on my first day at the firm, Took Kroll could be heard coming down the hall yelling, Moran, Moran! And so I went out and he had made me a beautiful, actually not so beautiful, um, but a green satin banner um, that he had used glitter glue to write the number 100 on. And I was wearing a new blue suit that my mom had bought me uh, for my first day of work and took put the green banner over me. There was glitter everywhere. Um, but that was sort of my first, um, my historical moment in the firm. And to him, you know, hugely proud day for him. And one of his favorite things to do out the firm, even now at Christmas time, was he would always walk into your office, turn the lights on and off, turn them on and off. And that was always a favorite thing in my mind. But that was to let you know, I'm here. If you need me in the darkness or light, I'm here for you. One of the important cultural hallmarks of Kroll and Mooring is that we've been very committed to pro bono work in the community. Took Kroll was a huge proponent of that. I was the first full-time public service professional um, attorney in the District of Columbia. The firm is an award-winning uh, pro bono performer in our community. I think a lot of firms in the city look to Kroll as a role model for its reputation for pro bono. I have people calling me often to ask me what I do on this or what I do on that. We attended our first George Bailey Awards ceremony. I'd never seen anything like it. I didn't know something like this could exist in a large law firm. Uh, we're totally blown away. Walked away talking to some of my colleagues from my former firm to say, we can't imagine this ever happening somewhere else. Some of the uh, pro bono cases that have been uh, really memorable, we were able to get our client, Crosley Green, who is an innocent man, and the evidence of his innocence is literally overwhelming. Get him off death row first, we committed and the firm backed us up and has backed us up all the way um, to do everything we can to exhaust all of his appeals and do everything we can to get him out of prison. So we're the voice for those people who don't have means, who don't have champions. And that's what we love doing. 
We love being there for them, making a difference, and hopefully making a difference in the broader community in the process. Kroll and Morin culture is about community. It's a word that I keep going back to and it means a lot of different things, but it means looking out for each other and thinking about others around you, not just yourself. Stan Johnson famously says, and I love this line, we chose each other. So that was kind of the attitude. We chose each other. We were in this together. We're partners, we're friends. And that's what's always been one of the great things about Coral Armory. No matter where you're at, what's going on, what can we do to help? And vice versa, what can I do to help you? We have a lateral candidate who I've gotten to know quite well and we've all been trying to encourage to join our New York office. And she said, you know, when I went in and I met with Glenn McGordy, who's one of my partners in New York, I said to myself, I found my people. I loved that when she said, I found my people because I felt exactly the same way. The firm from day one stuck out in terms of a, uh, just an incredibly collaborative, uh, nice place to be. Uh, as we went through the interview process, we joked that maybe they had hired actors and actresses to play lawyers because we couldn't believe people this were really this nice and this friendly. There's something to be said with being able to walk down the hall and um, especially in such a collegial environment um, and you know, just kind of brainstorm with your colleagues on you know, trying to solve tough problems. But we certainly try to staff these cases in a way that helps integrate the firm. And I really believe that's critical. Being a leader in this law firm is a privilege in my life. I think every day, um, and I think many of us do in leadership, about the responsibility we have to our lawyers and our staff to both be strategic, you know, to take care of the business, but also to, uh, to really know um, all of the lawyers and staff who work with us um, and to find a way to convey to them that they are each as individuals um, valued by us and known to us. The duck. What is it about the duck? Ah yes, the duck. I really don't know much about the duck story other than the ducks were in the fountain, I think something about the fountain upstairs. What I heard is that we had this really cool fountain that appeared at one of our, at, after our anniversary. Years ago, took, after about 15 years of the firm being in existence, decided that in order to be a prestigious, serious law firm in the district, that our reception area needed to have a fountain. It's nice, but it was kind of severe. It's very angular, it's very metallic. And after the inaugural week of the fountain, um, installation, a duck appeared magically. And as I understand it, that duck was scooped out by somebody to trying to keep the sobriety of the, of the place. And then within a couple of days, dozens and dozens of ducks started to appear. I'm sure the artist would be appalled, but the firm loved it and the ducks multiplied. In fact, they spread from the fountain to people's desks. Now the duck has really become one of our symbols of, you know, not taking ourselves too seriously, but still doing fantastic work for our clients. In the 14 years I've been here, I've had a front row seat at watching not just the changes in Crow and Mooring, but in the legal profession that have really been built around a great appreciation of what it means to be diverse and the further challenge of becoming inclusive in a way that makes diversity meaningful and lasting. We have a sponsorship program where we're really focused on helping the next generation of diverse attorneys get the connections that they need, get to know the people that they need to know, engage with the stakeholders who they normally wouldn't get a chance to get to know. But I think for Kroll, diversity has become a cornerstone of our culture because it's just so important to how we provide client service. And I think it's being instilled from the top all the way to the bottom. So I remember when I was a mid-level associate, I'd been working with a partner on a really important issue for a client, and the client asked us to present to the board of directors on this issue. The partner said, Addie, why don't you come along? You know, you've, you've really helped in, in doing the diligence and assessing this. I'd like you to be there to listen as I present on it. So we go to the meeting, we walk into this room, about 25 people, board of directors, senior officers, all the big shots in the, in the company. 
all men, 100% men. And I go to get my coffee and the partner comes over and he sort of whispers to me, he's like, Addie, I don't like the optics of this. I don't want you in a supporting role. Would you feel comfortable taking the lead and presenting on this issue? And so I stood at the front of the room, did the presentation, and it still sits with me today that he saw that, because not every man would walk into a room and realize that you're the only woman in the room, and then gave me that opportunity to shine and to be sort of the voice of Kroll. And that partner is now on the management board and is a co-chair of one of my practice groups, and I think that reflects what we value in leadership. We're always thinking about the next generation of lawyers and how those of us in leadership at the firm can help propel those people to be the future leaders of this firm. I've really learned from someone like John McLeod what it means to be daring and bold. Somebody who was one of the founders of this firm and had to really put himself out there at a time when a lot of people were counting on him and looking to him to set not only a tone but to deliver on the promise that this firm had. To me, Kent Gardner, who served as chair after John, was a great example of someone who understood the importance of fellowship. It's one thing to profess leadership, but you have to earn it, and you have to have people who are willing and ready and committed to following you. I'm optimistic about the future of the firm because we have such fantastic people. The people really are what make Kroll and Mooring special, but they're really what helps us guide toward a really successful future. And so our people are continuing to be collaborative, they're continuing to be supportive of each other. What I tell junior associates at, the, at you know, these days is, you really just have to keep your eyes open. How is it coming out of law school that you know what you want to do? Um, you need to see what's available, um, experience as much as you can, both as a summer associate and when you come back full time. And then just really, you know, keep your mind open, keep your eyes open to see what interests you. I think you just have to know when you're looking at Crow and Mooring, this is a place where you can make your home, where you can be treated with respect and appreciation for your talents, where you'll have an opportunity to prove yourself, and where you're not going to be crammed into a cookie cutter mold of what you need to be in order for the firm to succeed. My advice to the next generation of pro lawyers would be don't be afraid to innovate. Take a long-term view of client relationships and treasure the culture that has been built over the last 40 years. We're now focused on the future, the next 40 years of Kroll and Mooring. And so we want to make sure that we're not only excelling at what we already do so well, but that we are making sure we continue moving where our clients are moving, where the needs are greatest. We reflect often on our founder's mission, which is ours still today, to provide the best legal services available in the world to our clients. Pearl and Mooring started as a revolution, and I think we attract people that are not afraid to think in revolutionary ways. So not just what's working today, but what do we want tomorrow to think like? Some of the secrets of our success, I think, have been that we have been able to evolve, we have been able to change, change in the, in the marketplace. We've tried to be far-sighted in terms of looking for new markets, looking for new opportunities being involved with cutting edge issues. Kroll & Mooring has um, broad and deep practices in a number of areas, transactional, litigation, many of them are government facing, the firm's known very well for its government contracts practice. What's really exciting to me are a number of the uh, more innovative, newer practices that are sprouting up all across the firm. We already understand our clients who are moving from being industrial or in manufacturing towards more and more digital in the application of their science and their craft. We understand that there are all sorts of traditional practices like health and uh, insurance and finance which have entirely new aspects challenging them and new opportunities through the digitization of everything in business these days. And so we have gone out and recruited the best from government, we've gone out and recruited the best from other firms, and we have elevated internally people who are studying and learning these challenges along with our clients so that we're side by side with them. 
obviously we do fantastic work, which is the most important aspect of it. But clients have told us that they think of us different. They, they notice our culture. So I think that is something that we want to make sure um, as we're adjusting and growing more broadly or internationally, and also the legal market keeps evolving. And so as we're doing that, just making sure that we're not losing sight of what actually makes us special, but also knowing that we need to adjust to continue to grow um, and actually serve our clients in a better way. Anniversaries are great because they give us an opportunity to celebrate, uh, to look back, uh, to say we made it this far, isn't that great? But anniversaries only mean something if they are a springboard to where we're going next. And I think this 40th anniversary year is an exciting time to think about where we're going next.